Welcome to Street Smart Samurai. I'm Dana Abbott, and I will be your guide throughout this video series on Kenjutsu, how to wield a Japanese sword. Before we go on to our next stance, let's review what we've done so far, both on the right and left side. And the left side. I want you to practice until your rope memory sets in so when you progress off to the next two stances you'll be much more efficient. The lower stance uses the same transitions as the center and upper stance. Let's look at this in depth by going through the numbers count of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's speed this up with a count of four. One, two, three, four. And with a count of two. One, two. And a count of one. One. The next stance in this series is an overhead stance. It has the same basic application as your center or low stance. Let's go through the numbers. The first count is count of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go to a count of four. One, two, three, four and let's go to a count of two one two and finish off with a count of one one now that we have a basic understanding of the three stances that you'll be using in sparring and fighting at this time I want you to practice until your rope memory sets in so you become smooth and your transition well. Center stance. Upper stance. At a different angle and lower stance. Center stance, upper stance, another side view, and lower stance, center stance, upper stance. It is very important to have a good, strong, balanced stance. Most of your fighting technique depends on it. If you have a stance that is too wide, it will slow you down. Of course, it will look nice, it will feel good, but will you be able to get to the target and get out unscathed? I am George, and this video is part of the Way Movement, a career path in video sponsored by TGN. To learn more, visit TGN.TV.